Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Sergi and here we are in the AITS Select Series, right, where I bring forward to you uh, some of the important questions related to JE Advance uh, from the question papers of the famous institutes all over India in the past few years. Okay, so this question I have picked up from uh, the China uh, Select Series, that is China AITS All India Test Series. Uh, this question was asked one or two years back and it was a direct lift off from the Iridos question. Okay, so let's see how they have uh, manufactured that question into a single option type question. Okay, so Here's the formal wording of it. It's about a cyclotron. So singly charged heavy ions of mass M each are accelerated in cyclotron so that their maximum orbital radius is R. The frequency of the cyclotron's oscillator is equal to F and the effective accelerating voltage across the Ds is capital V. Neglecting the gap between the Ds and ignoring the relativistic effects, the time of acceleration of each ion inside the cyclotron is he has given four options it should be carefully noted he is requiring the options in terms of which parameters okay so you want to give it a try it's a very important je advanced concept also the concept is there as part of ncrt textbook so in case you want to give a read and then come back you can do so i'll also explain the concept in a very um, some over the top manner in this problem before i take up the solution so give it a fair try and then come back to the solution. Okay, so here we go forward with the solution of the problem. So the concept first, let me show you a simple schematic diagram of the uh, cyclotron and what it is used for. This is the top view of it. You end up having two semicircular structures called as Ds. Okay, so this is the spelling that they'll use for the Ds. And the reason for calling it as a D is that each structure looks like a capital letter D from English alphabets. Okay. And there's a small gap between the D's you could see in the top view where ion would be released from rest. And in this small gap, you will have an electric field applied. Electric field accelerates the ions. But once it reaches this gap and you could see in the side view, you could clearly observe that uh, in the top view, you can't see that. But in side view, you could see from north and south pole of an electromagnet, you can apply an magnet magnetic field perpendicular to the uh, diagram. Okay, so that means this diagram, the magnetic field is either into the board or out of the board. So this magnetic field, once the ion enters it with some speed, uh, would take it in a circular path, but it's actually a semicircular path because there's a gap, the, in that particular gap, it will accelerate due to the electric field. Okay, and again, it enters the other D, it will accelerate again here in a semicircular path. So magnetic field can't change the speed of the particle. So during every, every semicircular path, obviously the speed has increased due to the electric field in the gap. So the radius will increase, but during that circular path, the speed won't change. So each of these semicircles, I can consider them as their own uniform circular motions. So as this one keeps spiraling out uh, in this particular D, it will finally uh, get ejected and this fast moving beam would be used in some other experiments. Okay, This is a very important particle accelerator as it is called. The cyclotron is called as a particle accelerator. There are many other trons also. Tron means a machine. Okay, So which can be used as particle accelerator, but this is the basic version. And uh, the question asks about what is the time taken for it to come out? That is the time spent inside the D is same as the time taken to come out. He has given us not the individual radii, but the final orbital radius. That means the last circle that it has actually undergone, that value of R is given and you're supposed to do it. Now, one more important thing you should understand is that the alternating source ensures that the electric field changes direction in a um, periodic manner. Why is this important? Because if the electric field were only in one direction, if it's a uniform and constant electric field, then when an ion gets accelerated in one direction and enters it in the reverse direction, then it would decelerate it. So the genius step here is to ensure that the electric field also reverses its direction in order to enable the movement of the ions in an accelerated manner. So every time it enters in opposite direction, electric field aids that motion is the genius trick that you have. You can't use a D 
DC source. So summing up all this in one particular diagram, you could clearly see I have drawn those semicircles in a much better manner at this particular place. So when the ion is injected into this path and it undergoes a semicircle, the first radius, uh, you could write the centripetal force on that as mv square by r equal to bq into this is small v. There's a velocity with which it enters. So every time it enters with a greater velocity, right? You could clearly see it's a greater velocity. Velocity is also on this side. R is proportional to V. So therefore, you could uh, assure that the radius will keep starting to increase. And the AC generator, the frequency should be such, uh, such that the time spent by that in the semicircle should be equal to the time taken for this to flip. Flip means that any AC generator will take half the time period to change from positive voltage to negative voltage. So that's why you could say that the frequency of the circular motion should be the frequency of the AC generator. Okay, so that's why they could write BQ divided by 2 pi m. How did we get this? If you solve this equation, you'll be able to get V is equal to uh, some number from this so after canceling BQR divided by m. And uh, the time period can be written as 2 pi r divided by uh, v and then frequency is one by time period. So from here to here, I think it's a simple uniform circular motion manipulation. And then we say this frequency should be same as the frequency of this oscillator. Okay, so, so if you want more elaborate explanation, which I think I've already done that with better pictures, you can also uh, go ahead and read this from either your NCRT physics textbook or much better explanation given in Resnick and Halliday textbook. Okay, so with this formal introduction to the topic, let's go to the problem again. So he's talking about the ions and please always in the exam situation, try to check which parameters are there in the options. Okay, there are multiple ways to express. So magnetic field is not given in the answer. So you're agenda would be to get rid of that magnetic field in terms of the given parameters. Okay, so the maximum orbital radius is given accelerating voltage is given that voltage of the source is given and also the frequency of the oscillator is given. So these are the quantities he's expecting you to write the answer in terms of. So the for the last radius or the maximum radius, we can use that same old MV by BQ. Q in this problem is E because it's a singly charged ion. Any singly charged ion, it will have the same charge as the charge of a proton. Okay, so one by F is two pi M by BQ as I already told you in the previous slide. So the kinetic energy in the last orbit can be written as uh, P square by two M where I wantedly wrote P so that I can substitute this. So it will be B square E square R square by 2m. So this is the kinetic energy. And how does this kinetic energy get developed? Remember, Ke cannot change using magnetic field. Magnetic field just takes it in a curve. It is all due to the passages inside the D. Okay, so the gaps where the voltage got applied, that is where this kinetic energy was developed. And was it developed in one go or in steps? It was developed in steps. How many passages? Let's assume this happened due to n passages of the ion through the gap. Every time it goes in reverse direction, electric field also reverses uh, conducively to give rise to this acceleration. So the time between each passage is half the time period of that circular motion. So one by two F. So you could say n times of the each acceleration. Remember charge into voltage will give you the value of the kinetic energy of acceleration. Okay, so n times of such things should be equal to the final Ke that I got from here. You could see I directly substituted this. That, give, that would give me an estimate of the number of times that it passed through the D. Okay, and problem is this N will contain a B which is not given in the question. So I'll have to replace this B here. Could, could you see I do did that with this white colored expression. So the value of B I rearranged and put it in terms of frequency given. So entire thing will give me the value of N. So I'll keep it like this. Therefore, the time spent should be each time. Remember, it will only spend half the time period, which is one by two F because it's half semicircle period. So the time spent would be N times. See, actually there is extra time because in the gap also it will spend some time. He's talking about that in the question as neglecting the gap between the Ds. So whatever time he's calculating, he's taking it only in the uh, semicircular part. So that would ensure that the answer is B option. One more Im important thing that you should know for JE exams is is that uh, cyclotron has a certain drawback that it once the ion becomes faster and faster and goes closer to the velocities of light, then relativistic effects also come into picture. And that relativistic effects make sure that these calculations are useless. Okay, so uh, it's very, very important that you, you, need, you need not know what is relativistic effect and all that, but you need to know what is the um, limitation of that. Okay, so I would like request you 
to go through the second part of this question in the Erodo. You could clearly say I'll post the question and the solution in the next video. I know I have uh, three or four pending videos from Erodo Select Solutions, which I promise you to finish within the coming days. And this is added to that list. So you could see the same language has been used by that AITS examiner. And uh, the first part of the question was asked there. Okay, so I would request you to go through the second one also. It is a very good potential to become a comprehension in a JE advanced exam. And in the past, we have seen quite a few number of times Erodo questions inspiring comprehension questions in JE advanced physics. Okay, so the second question that he asks is the approximate distance covered. And this is even not straightforward and it requires some nice uh, approximation. That's why Erodo clearly states the approximate distance. So I'll come up with the solution for this and a proper explanation in the next um, upcoming videos. And in case you have liked this, I'll be coming up with more AITS select series. I'll be selecting good questions, which will boost up your confidence for the JE advanced examinations. Okay. And apart from that, the Pathfinder, Olympiad and Resolve series playlists are in the links description below and make sure you go through them before your exam so that you have an edge over others. All the loopholes or any vacuums that are created in your concepts could be plugged because of going through this uh, 100 plus videos that I have made over 90% of them would be related to your JE advanced syllabus itself. Okay. In case you have liked this video, please do give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends so that I can get more subscriptions, request them to subscribe, ask them to go through at least three or four videos. And then they'll definitely I understand from the quality of the content I produce will be forced to subscribe. Okay. And hit the bell notification bell icon so that you end up getting the updates that I'm going to post during the next two or three weeks continuously. Okay. Thank you. See you in the next one.